Uh oh. I'm missing a gasket. I can't. I can't be missing a gasket. I need a tether. Might have to shorten that chain a bit. But maybe not. What am I hitting? Oh! Didn't want to do that. I can pick that up. Well, come on now. I got. My exhaust tacked up a bit too high. Hey, I should have a couple nuts ready. Ah, ah. Ah, the linkage rod. Boy, I should never do this stuff right after eating. This twice now. In the same video, I think. I'm going to pull that linkage rod off and then turn the camera back on. Don't drop the nut down the intake manifold. We'll be doing this all over again. I remember in my junior year of high school, auto mechanics vocational school, Bob Kinsel. He had the job of putting an engine in this big old Chrysler. It's as big as a whale and it's about to set sail. Anyway, we were in the junior class and one of the seniors thought it'd be funny to uh, take a couple handfuls of handfuls, handfuls of floor dry, and dump it down the intake, just to teach him a lesson for never leaving your carburetor off and your intake wide open. At least that was the conjecture. Wonder why it didn't want to run very well. It didn't want to start very well. Come on, bang! But it started. We were puzzled at the brown cloud that came out of the back of the car. Never seen a brown cloud before. And an odd aroma. But I digress. So yes, floor dry will pass through valves. I think I'll go ahead and put all my clampages on here. will facilitate in getting these up into position and getting the rings lined up and into the head. But I'll do all that off camera. I was trying to keep this truck nice and dull, but I've been in and out of here so much. Got the fender all shiny now. Oh yeah. One thing I have learned in this experience, warped a little bit, but not enough to worry about. Always tighten your center first. Because if you tighten your ends first and work your way to the center, if it's bowed out this way, those need to go that way when it's pulled in. If you tighten them down, they can't go that way. So, always do your center first, and that way these ends can slide out and then torque them down. Let that be a lesson to you. Don't it figure? Remember that wrench I knocked off the fender? What? Which one do you think that was? Yep, what I need right now. I'll be back after quite some time here. One, two, three, click, 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 and click. Ah. 
Now, originally, the bolts came up from the bottom, nuts on the top, and then they had a the little stamped steel jam nut on top of them. Since it's so much easier to put them in from the top and then them hang down and crawl underneath, and push it up from the bottom, put the nuts on. I happen to have some right here. Besides, I think it's more aesthetically pleasing. Oh no. That's why they come up from the bottom. There's no room to put the bolt through on the back one. That's okay. I'll put the back one up from the bottom. Let's see if we can push them out of there with the exhaust. And I don't think that's in the way of trying to put the clip on, is it? It is. If I leave that out of the way, it's easier to put my throttle linkage clip on. Cotter pin. Okay, I'll do that. I'll be back. Linkage in place. Exhaust system up. Hmm. And again, I see. Hmm. Uh. And again, I see. Here's the other reason why the bolts come up from the bottom because there's not enough room clearance here to get a wrench you can't get an end wrench on it uh, you might get a socket on it if it's thin wall of course I got a socket on it to get the bolt out of there oh 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 Pretty frustrating there. I think maybe I'll just shove them up from the bottom. Did anybody think about this? Mm -hmm. Drift punching. Nutting. Theoretically, with these two bolts in, the third bolt should go in with minimal difficulty. I didn't say with no difficulty, I said minimal difficulty. I'll try to bring it up a little closer. Ah, I'm going to have to beat it into submission. Oh, this is going to hurt in the morning. Oh. Let me draw this up. Going under. It's in there. You just have to trust me. Especially once I put this nut on there. I'm going to try to draw this up as evenly as possible. Which I won't be able to tell from down below. I won't be able to tell if the nut's spinning up top. But I am going to try this gun first. within reach. It is. Pick up the slack. There we go. Get a little bindery going on it. say I could have got a wrench on there. But as they say, afterthought is a real good excuse for medication. I just can't get the feel with an impact, you know. I can see it moving a little bit, but hard to gauge anything. 
I see it turning. I'm going to give this one one more tug. I'm going to call that click. 20 foot pounds, it says. 20 pound feet. I can't get to. What's this one feel like? Oh yeah, that's 20. I was a little shy. Oh, okay, that'll do. That'll do big. Ah, click. It's done. It's all done. There's no longer an exhaust leak. Whoever gets this truck, you really better appreciate this. Poof! It's magically assembled. It's about 58 degrees. At 20 minutes after the hour. It'll take a few revolutions to get fuel to the carburetor. Choke on. Oh, you know what? I might be wanting to hook up my throttle linkage too. Uh oh. Something's gone awry. Bonjour, monsieur. Well, it was not our dug. No. <laughs> uh, there is a lady I know who has a dog like that. I don't know if it's the where they bust up the, the marijuana, you know, a little further than the gavlik. Yeah. I think those people had the uh, Great Pyrenees too. Well, she said that it followed her into the into their place, and I said, well, if it follows you back here, then we'll just keep it. Okay. Did he follow? He didn't come back. So. No. No. Ken called us a long time ago and I wanted to know if our dog was home because he thought that was our dog. Yeah, no, no, I've heard that. Uh, I've heard it from various people. They thought it was my dog too or something like that. So. And what did you tell them? I told them, it's, no, it's not my dog. And then that's when I discovered or somebody told me it was from that lady. And uh, who took it back? I don't know. No, Nicole. Yeah. Nicole okay. Took it back. Yeah, Nicole took it back to those people, and uh, those are the people who had, um, the, I remember now, two horses much further. Oh, yeah. The lake on the left, where they cleaned up the whole land. That yeah. I <clears throat> yeah, I know where you're talking. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, Oui. Ok, thank you monsieur. Bon. I'll see you later. Au reservoir. Au reservoir, bye bye. Where was I? Uh, throttle, choke, battery, battery. Oh, yeah. Rooster, goats, dogs, throttle, choke, starter. <laughs> the fuel not pumping? Is the choke not choking? Choke is choking. Ah, fuel is not pumping. Give it a snort. Oh wait, open the choke. That's not to uh, grind the starter and run the battery down. what I need. This is just what I need.
Full. Oh, that sounds so much better. And the fuel pump is now pumping. These old six cylinders. I had a 50 Chevy with a 216. You can idle it down to like 300 RPM. I love it. Alright, test drive. I wonder if the wipers work. They do! Spin! much completes this truck. It is officially now for sale. So it'll probably be on Elgermaron.com, but I'll most likely put it on Craigslist in Reno. Or you can just email me at rnrtot at frontier.com. But I gotta get a lot for it because <laughs> I need it. By the way, this is a August 23rd one year anniversary of the head-on collision. So with that, I bid you adieu. Redneck Restorations. This old truck. I'm just French now. Hmm. Again, I say, hmm. That fine thread nut does not want to go on that. First thread bolt stud. I'm just putting them in place, not torquing them down. blow anyway. This won't do me much good because it's too long. I don't know which way this has to go. Thinner. You just have to trust me. Especially once I put this nut on there. Well, especially once I put this nut on there.
The other one was wrong then. This is the right one. Poof! It's magically installed. Alright. Cold start! Of course, it's gonna take a few revolutions to get the fuel back up to the carburetor. Of course, I haven't hooked the choke cable up yet. Ah. Poof! It's all together. I don't like that one. Poof! <laughs>